I want to speak my truth so loudly that the earth shakes that I break the curse of smallness because I felt my binge eating come back. Why don't we normalize being so kind to ourselves, even if it's cringy, even if it's, you know, very vulnerable. Hi guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking perhaps a bit extraterrestrial with this fit that's going on and I'm living for it but today I just wanted to do my makeup with you and I'm trying a new heatless curls hairstyle so if all goes well maybe you will try this at home and be inspired but yeah I just wanted to chat about what's surfacing what's coming through for me on the energetic plane and um, just recent learnings of mine while doing my makeup so I'm just gonna dive into this I normally use a primer on my face, but I don't really feel like doing that today. So I'm just going in with my Tarte. It's called Found Sealer, so it's like a foundation and a concealer in one. And I just love how full coverage their products are. Although, this is my skin right now. I feel like my... I definitely... I always have scars on my face from acne, but they fade. I feel like healing is just happening within my life naturally on so many different planes like I called upon the healing to happen and all of it's been coming to the surface and I really feel so capable of rewriting it and going beyond what I think that I know or what I think that I should expect from this life and from myself and I've been saying this that I've been waking up and just completely letting go of any attachments or any ideas, preconceived notions that I have about who I am as a person and just allowing myself to enter this space of nothingness because that's where all creation is possible. And I've been doing that in pretty much every aspect of my reality. And of course, with this pandemic that's going on, I feel like any illusion of comfort or what's the word, of safety that maybe a lot of people have had if they had a 9 to 5 job or a salary job. Any idea of a plan really just doesn't seem feasible right now. Like I have no idea where I'm going to be a few months from now and I have no idea what plans to make and it feels like so many people are being forced into present moment awareness and myself included so I've just been like yeah, I have, there's literally nowhere else for me to go, nothing else that I can plan, so I just have to be present moment to moment, and it's a beautiful thing. I recently have been healing a lot my relationship to food, which I made a very long Instagram <laughs> post about this, so thank you to anyone who did read that. My Instagram is Yanomi underscore Hitomi, but it's so wild because I felt my binge eating come back, and it was kind of out of my control it just felt like something was possessing me and I was like blacking out and just stuffing my face and it's such a interesting thing because I'm in such a beautiful place and I feel really happy but it just felt like this binge eating this coping method was really trying to let me know that there's something below the surface that needs to be looked at that needs to be looked at like every meal it's just like wait why am i not feeling safe right now in this place in this time and i did realize that it's just this feeling of finding home and safe space that is so important to me and that so much of my food and so much of my like coping or needing to protect myself comes from my inner child just not feeling safe or this lingering fear that I will not be protected and my binge eating I think I binge ate for like a week straight and I was with my friends and I was just letting them know what was happening and I really appreciate my friends because they honestly just listen and they don't try to tell me what to do and <laughs> they just hold space for me. I feel like that's the best way to hold space for someone is just to ask questions and allow them to kind of answer them for themselves instead of like projecting your own ideas onto another person. And I was still kind to myself. I was still working out and moving my body, but it just felt like I w didn't want my stomach to feel empty, which is interesting. And the last three days I just of like when I was binge eating I just sent so much love to it I was like you know what there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing for some reason I feel the need to keep protecting myself but I am safe and I just kept affirming to myself I'm healing from this because I think that a lot of times when we're kind of like relapsing in some negative habit or coping method that we have we get so upset with ourselves and we're like 
damn, I'm so far gone. Like, I can't believe I've fallen off my path so bad. Or um, just you allow yourself to feel out of control of the situation, which is how I felt initially. And instead, I changed the narrative and was like, you know what? This is coming up for a reason. And in this moment where I have been stuffing my face for five days straight and I feel out of control, I'm actually healing this. And I have decided to like to love it, which I feel like I've spoken about before, just to send love to those denser parts of yourself, of your consciousness. But I really loved it in a way that was like a mother loving her child. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And and then I woke up and I just felt no urge to stuff myself. I felt like this lingering fear that maybe I never fully realized was there was lifted. I think sometimes you don't know what you're holding on to until you let it go. And that's what it felt like. I just woke up and I felt lighter. I felt like a new person and I didn't feel the need to just stuff my face and I didn't feel afraid of just letting my stomach be empty and like I said I, I mean I have overcome or like I've been working through binge eating for a while and it will just come and go randomly but I feel like I never fully knew the root I guess I never knew how seriously I needed to allow myself to feel safe and the reason that it was surfacing so much recently is because I just moved into a new house and I'm still getting grounded and also I felt like my landlord was maybe pushing my boundaries a little bit or just I just didn't feel super comfortable with like some of the exchanges we were having and something that came through for me was that I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do and it's interesting because that doesn't seem like something that would be linked to eating but so much of controlling food just has to do with the need for control and safety and really doesn't have anything to do with food at all it's just a psychological thing a coping method um and let me put some concealer on. I don't know if I need to talk you guys through what I'm doing, but I feel like I'm just gonna go in with my stream of consciousness. But I just need so much space to process and to film videos and to do work and to ground into my home. And I have such a guilty conscience that if someone wants to hang out with me and I can't, I feel sometimes like I'm a bad person or I just feel guilty. I'm just like, I should be giving them my energy, but I have to give that energy to myself and I have to honor how things actually just feel in my body. Like if I tell you I'm going to hang out with you and then I instantly feel like, damn it, I shouldn't have made that plan or like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. It's like, I should just listen to that and tell someone, hey, I actually just really need time alone right now. And then I can show up so much more fully to hang out with that person. This is just a random example, but I feel... Um, guilty really easily <laughs> especially when it comes to things with men I you know there's a whole story behind that but I think in, a lot in my past I've done things because I felt like I had to basically especially sexually especially with men and I'm just coming into a phase in my life where it's becoming so clear that I don't have to do anything that I don't want to and I can protect myself, keep my energy safe, keep my sexual energy safe and that it's all valid and I think I finally just made space to allow myself to not feel guilty for, um, I like a little collarbone moment, uh, not feel guilty for saying no and honoring my own time and space and just allowing myself to listen and in the moment just know yes or no if I want to share my energy with someone. <laughs> I guess it's just really such a realization because when I was younger, me and my mom were really close. I was born on her birthday. We're both Scorpios. Like Scorpios are very loyal. We are very intense and passionate and the maybe less evolved Scorpio can be mysterious and can be secretive i feel like i'm such an open book clearly but me and my mom always had a really close bond and i remember the moment that it shifted was when i was in the car with her and she asked me if i had hooked up with this boy and i did hook up with this boy but i really didn't want to and things kind of escalated to a point that i didn't feel comfortable with and i felt so much resentment because i was like you were supposed to keep me safe from this like sexual trauma that i experienced and she asked me like did you hook up with him and i was like <sighs> no mom and I slammed the door and I just felt like that was when my connection to her just it kind of like cut off because I felt like my inner child wasn't protected from 
my mom because we never had open dialogue about that and we didn't talk about you know hooking up or the birds and the bees ever and so I was just like I put myself in this position because I didn't know any better and no one was there to help me and I guess that it's just kind of a full circle moment where I'm like, well, I'm helping myself now. I'm loving myself now. I'm monitoring, you know, how I feel in certain situations and um, allowing it to feel valid. I think that probably a lot of women, femmes, queer people, uh, trans people experience like this fear sometimes. I mean, just everyone. I don't even know. I just want to call upon all of those groups of people, women of color, people of color, black women, like everyone has certain fears or can feel fearful in certain situations because of trauma that they've experienced and sometimes for me I do still feel this like need to protect myself around men or just have a little bit of a wall up and make sure I know their intentions and I realize that that is so valid because I was kind of demonizing it or downplaying it but it's just like if you need to tune in to keep yourself safe then do that and and you do have power. I guess that's like, it's Leo season and I feel like that's a really big lesson that I'm learning is I have so much power and control and I don't have to feel powerless. I don't have to feel unsafe because I am so protected. I can ask other people for help. I can ask other people for safety. And I also in my own energy can state my own boundaries. And um, yeah, I just feel really liberated in that truth and really happy to feel that like in the cells of my being and that is what I feel like really has en ended my binge eating or just this desire to keep myself safe and I'm not saying that I will never struggle with it again but I will never struggle with it in a way that feels out of my control or that it feels like something else is overcoming me because all of that truly just stemmed from that fear of not being protected safe or feeling like I'm gonna have to do something that I don't want to do which can sound really heavy but it's just my truth. I feel like that weight is lifted off of me and it's really interesting to feel that in my body. With everything surfacing also around child sex trafficking, which has increased a lot during this pandemic, it's, I feel even more called to use my voice and to speak my boundaries and to remember that I am free in this moment and not everyone has the, the ability to use their voice. Some people are chained up and locked up. You know, people are victims to these situations. I feel like every time that I stand up for myself and use my voice, it's just allowing other women, other people to do the same, making space for that and putting out a frequency of just being fully empowered, fully in control and really owning my sovereignty, like reclaiming my freedom, not allowing myself to feel trapped or small or stuck. I want to speak my truth so loudly that the earth shakes, that I break the curse of smallness that I've been uh, conditioned to feel a lot of my life around certain people. And that feels really good and necessary. And sometimes it's easier to think about healing when you take the whole collective into account. It's like, you're not just rising for yourself, you're rising for all people everywhere. And it feels powerful. <laughs> I definitely feel like I'm here on this island in this time for a very specific reason and it is to heal. Part of what I just healed was this, like this fear um, and this binge eating because in my past relationship, the one that I just recently ended, I would still binge eat and I didn't know why it would happen but it felt like such a secretive thing where sometimes when my partner would leave the house I would order Postmates and get by Chloe and just eat like the biggest bowl of vegan nachos and a vegan burger and sweet potato fries and that's a lot of food for me for maybe anyone I don't know but I I don't know what a good portion or healthy portion size is I would feel like oh I'm in such a supportive partnership I'm in this home I feel like everything externally is okay but still I feel the need to like eat in the shadows and like punish myself for some reason and sometimes when we would have little arguments that were very very mild about like who was going to do the dishes I would just walk out and I would just go to the bodega and get like three bags of chips walk for blocks and eat chips until I felt sick and it's just it was always something that I was like how do I heal this like what do I do I just feel out of control of this and I'm here just to sit with all the things that I 
know that I've been waiting to heal and that I've been asking to heal. And so that's, you know, my relationship to food, my relationship to just sharing my boundaries to men, to both the feminine and masculine energy. And it's all happening. And it feels like I'm on this grand quest to fully return to myself. And that's the, what this season of my life is, is just this beautiful, gentle, deep rising that's happening. And it feels like I can feel it in my bones. I can feel my body just becoming lighter. I can feel the energy moving with more ease. It's really beautiful, but you know, also it can be a lot. But I think we are in these physical bodies to alchemize dense energy into light. And it gets easier the more that you do it. I normally love using the Anastasia brow pencil. This is the Tarte one. I just don't love the applicator as much. It's harder to make thin, wispy, natural looking eyebrow hairs. I've also been realizing that truly nothing happens on accident. <laughs> and everything is such a learning lesson. It's not even that I've been realizing it, it's just been happening. I'm so hot right now. I'm gonna open the windows. I had them closed because it's windy, but it's gonna get a little loud. I need this. I think that I'm mostly done with my makeup. I really wanted to put mascara on, but I left my eyelash curler in my friend's car, and that's unfortunate. My friend sent me a meme this morning, and it was like, a Homer Simpson meme. Whoever the wife is, I'm completely blanking on her name from The Simpsons, and she's picking out stuff at the grocery store, and it's just like me choosing my coping methods. It was like staying up till 4 a.m., binge eating 2,000 calories, and all just these negative coping methods. And I told my friend, we actually normalize a lot of stuff that really isn't healthy, even just my relationship to my body and the way that I will like sit there and grab my lower belly fat and decide whether I should eat more or not. That is something that I've done my whole life or taking progress photos of myself, like just taking awkward selfies where I'm just like trying to see what my body looks like because I have such bad body dysmorphia and then decide my worth and just nitpick my body. Like that is so unhealthy and I've normalized it within myself and I'm just like, maybe I don't have to do those things. Maybe I can just love myself exactly in this moment and I don't need to change anything and even just allowing myself to think about my life with those truths like it's just is that really possible like can I just love myself right now and how does that feel and I've been anchoring that in moment to moment but it's like there are many other things even just our negative dialogue towards ourselves or self-deprecating humor it's just like why normalize that why don't we normalize being so kind to ourselves, even if it's cringy, even if it's, you know, very vulnerable. Why don't we normalize that instead? And that's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> wow, I can't wait to be a grandma. I'm honestly really excited. I think it's because I kind of already feel like a grandma. Okay, I'm going to close the windows. Someone's mowing me along. Mmm. Lime water is so good. I'm totally adopting kids. That's been coming through so much for me. Ever since I was really young, I've always known that I wanted to adopt children. And I just met this girl who's a photographer and she just happened to have 15 adopted brothers and sisters. And I was like, wow, your parents are angels. And they had the means to afford that, which is a divine thing that probably aligned. But yeah, I'm excited for that. I do get baby fever. Okay. So hopefully this method worked. I'm excited. I love my curly hair. My mom has super curly hair. It's kind of like ramen noodle type curls. They're very tight. And I always wish that I got her hair, but I got my dad's very straight hair, which is beautiful too. But when I have my hair curly, it just makes me feel more Latina, more like my mom. My hair was kind of damp when I put this in. I think it came out. It's not as curly as I would like it to be. I did leave this overnight, so I guess I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit curlier, but it is really nice, natural looking curls. Maybe I can just add some dry shampoo, make it a little bit more textured and voluminous. It's also still just slightly damp. Hair is definitely a spiritual thing to me. It feels like they're my antennas. And a lot of people tell me to trim my ends or tell me what to do with my hair, and I'm just like, 
I'm sorry, I'm just gonna grow it out. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I love my hair. It has my own personal meaning and I will be growing it out. I do occasionally trim my split ends, but I, that's like the extent of it. I'm just gonna keep letting my hair grow naturally and freely. If it's really dead, maybe I will consider it, but it feels soft. Like it's definitely thinner on the bottom, but it's feels soft and healthy still. Yeah, hair is a very personal and sacred thing. Ooh, I like these curly tendrils in the front. So I think this is the final look. I just did a little half up, half down thing because the hair isn't as curly as I would like it to be. So I think this just balances it out and is cute and casual. And I feel like my hair is really shiny. And that's because I've been taking a lot of vegan collagen and just eating a lot of healthy fats. And uh, I just feel like my hair is really happy right now, which is a good feeling. But yeah, this is the finished kind of natural makeup look. And that's what's on my mind. That's pretty much what this video was, was a therapy session for me. So thank you very much for listening and for existing and for rising today. No matter how you're showing up in this moment, it is valid and affirm to yourself, I am healing this. If you are going through um, a relapse of some form of self-harm or if you feel like you're falling off your path, you're like, I'm actually arriving once again. I'm stepping deeper into myself and rewrite that narrative in a positive way. I feel like I'm an alien a lot of the time, truly. Like, I'm just witnessing things and trying to be so objective. And I'm like, well, how does that feel? And like, why is that normalized? And can we live a completely different life? And who really is Hitomi? And what really is this existence about? And that feels really good and safe to not just accept things as they are, but to create my reality as I would like to feel and exist in this human manifestation that I am. I'm sweating so much, but I love you guys. I'm going to put these back on. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. I cherish you and um, I'm just proud of you for being exactly where you are on this journey. Thank you so much for being you and I'll see you in a video soon, I hope. Bye!